LSU takes down Georgia State 56 to 14 at home in the second to last game of the season. And what was looking like it might be a little bit more interesting than we anticipated ended up being an absolute blast of a night, a Heisman performance of a night, if you will. You are locked on LSU, your daily podcast on the LSU Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day. All right, what's up, y'all? Thank you for making Locked On LSU your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, Locked On LSU, we are part of the Locked On Network, your team, every single day. Today's game reaction edition of Locked on LSU is brought to you by FanDuel. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, of course. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That is $150 if your team wins. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Well, LSU takes care of business against a team that they should have taken business take should have taken care of business against. Words are hard today. Anyways, LSU takes down Georgia State 56 to 14. Now look, we're gonna get into all of it. But in the beginning of the game, in that first quarter, I thought things were going to be a whole lot more interesting than I ever expected them to. I'm thinking back after Georgia State scores their second touchdown of the night and ties it 14-14, when when, uh, they were able to pretty much just do whatever they wanted to do offensively when your defense couldn't get a stop, when you essentially handed, no, not essentially, you did, when you handed Georgia State 15 yards off of an Ashton Stance DPI, whenever, who I told you to look out for, Marcus Carroll, their leading running back on the night, or leading running back rather on the season and also on the night, their leading running back on the, on the season, Marcus Carroll, just waltzed right down the field, 44 yards for a touchdown. I'm thinking, oh, goodness gracious, like, is this is this actually happening? Like, is this actually going to be a ball game? In my head, I'm thinking about all of the I didn't talk trash, but essentially the confidence that I had in the preview pod on Saturday morning of, look, LSU is going to cover the spread. Look, LSU is going to run up the score. Whatever the spread is, 35, 32, 31 and a half, whatever it is, lay it because LSU is going to blow this team out. They've got a horrendous pass defense, which they do. And we saw that on full display. They got a pretty solid, and not a pretty solid, but a decent offense. You know, this team's going to roll. I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm going to get cold take so hard. I'm thinking to myself, please, please, please don't let LSU pull in Auburn, which if you didn't see it yesterday, Auburn lost at home to New Mexico State. Aggies, not Lobos, don't get it twisted, by 20 plus points. They were dominated in all phases for pretty much a consistent 60 minutes from by New Mexico State. I'm thinking, is LSU seriously going to screw up this season? Their potential to get 10 wins and Jaden Daniels Heisman hopes off of a loss to freaking Georgia State. But no, it was, you know, Georgia State was able to score two touchdowns on their first three possessions. But that was all that she wrote for Georgia State on the night. I knew this defense was bad. So after they've scored that first touchdown, I thought, eh, you know what? This this defense is bad. They're going to score. This offense is good enough. They're going to be able to make some plays. Once they score that second touchdown, I'm not going to like a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit uncomfortable. But like I said, that was it on the night for Georgia State. LSU takes it 56 to 14. And it was a video game number kind of night for the offense, which I guess we might be a little bit used to at this point, video game numbers from this offense, but it was, wasn't just the numbers themselves. It was video game kind of plays like the, like the NCAA 14 kind of plays when you're just like F it. Like, I'm just going to go for it. I'm just going to, you know, join stick it, just press all the buttons and do some crazy and wild things. That is what we saw from LSU's offense on Saturday night, eight touchdowns on the night. Jaden Daniels was responsible for all eight touchdowns, which ties an LSU record with Joe Burrow for most single uh, single game touchdown score. And of course, Joe Burrow did that against Oklahoma in the college football playoff, which is just nuts that they did that in a college football playoff game. 
you know, no disrespect to Georgia State, but doing it against Georgia State's a little bit different than doing it against Oklahoma in the college football playoff, but I digress. But still, that's a, that's a, a record-tying night. You don't take that lightly. That's a, it was a massive night from the offense from Jaden Daniels. We'll get into Jaden Daniels coming up next. But just the, the effort kind of play calling. And I'm saying that in a good way, that effort, let's ball. Like, effort, let's go for it. We're going for it kind of night offensively. First touchdown, 18-yard touchdown pass to Malik Neighbors. Second touchdown, J- uh, Jaden Daniels pops off a 14-yard run into the end zone. The uh, the third touchdown uh, pass was a 27-yarder to Kyron Lacey. That's when LSU really started to break away because that third touchdown, now they're leading 21-14. Georgia State gets the ball back. They turn it over on downs. And this one, it was really just Mike Denbrock, like big nuts Mike Denbrock being like, let's just go for it. Let's just call. We're calling off the dogs. We're doing something fun. If it doesn't work, that's fine. It's going to be second down. If it w- does work, then we're going to look sick by doing it. And it did, did work, and it was sick because Jaden Daniels hit Brian Thomas for a 70-yard touchdown pass on the very first play of that possession. That was some video game type of behavior. That was some, you know, throwing all caution to the wind kind of play calling from Mike Denbrock. Love that. Love that. And so early on, it really did feel kind of like a lifeless Tiger Stadium. The announcers were even saying that, like, man, Georgia State really has quieted this environment here in Baton Rouge. Night game in Tiger Stadium. That's not how the environment should be. But once LSU got up 28-14, I think that's when the crowd really started feeling it. I think that's when the team really started feeling themselves because the defense started to come up with a few more stops. It wasn't these massive chunk plays from Georgia State where they had all the confidence in the world. You were you were getting to the quarterback. You were able to stop the run for a, a good bit. And you were able to get some stops defensively. But just things – and the defense did what they needed to do. But the offense went above and freaking beyond because after that 70-yard touchdown pass to Kyron Lacey, or excuse me, to Brian Thomas, it was the 70-yard was to Brian Thomas, then the 13-yard touchdown to Kyron Lacey, and then we started to see some young guys, some freshmen get involved when Mac Markway had that three-yard, that short touchdown pass uh, for the sixth touchdown of the night, and then a quick run from Jaden Daniels for the seventh, and then to cap it all off for the eighth touchdown of the night to tie Joe Burrow's record for most touchdowns in a single game, a 40-yard pass to Malik Neighbors. And this one was such a fun one. And this was one that they actually reviewed just to make sure that Malik Neighbors had complete control of the ball, which of course he did because Malik Neighbors is just a freak. Um, and it jumps up, grabs it, secures the ball, and it falls flat on his back. And when I kept watching the replay, and I'm like, God, I'm getting – a shortness of breath just watching that replay. It was the most perfectly thrown ball. It was a great catch. It was a great play design. And it was just nothing but purple in the end zone. It was just chef's kiss way to seal off a 56 to 14 win over Georgia State. Just a massive day for the offense. And frankly, just a fun game to watch. Wasn't very fun when it was going uh, a little bit toe-to-toe with Georgia State there in the first quarter. The defense not getting the stops where they needed to, like I mentioned. The uh, the 44-yard run from Marcus Carroll where he essentially ran in the end zone untouched. It was just a really fun day. It was pure and utter domination from that LSU team for a good bit of 60 minutes, not the entirety, but a good bit of the 60 minutes. And the the offense just looked like they were having such a fun day. We got to see Garrett Nussmeyer there in, in the last bit of the fourth quarter. And that's what I want to get into coming up next is the amount that Jaden Daniels played. Do you agree with it? Do you not agree with it? And pulling Jaden Daniels when Brian Kelly decided to do so. We will get into that coming up. I am so incredibly excited to tell you all about our new partners over at listening.com. So college students, any students really, listen up because there's an incredible new app, our friends over at listening.com, which can take any academic paper, PDF, or class material and turn it into an audiobook. I actually just sent this along to my boyfriend who's getting his MBA. He's back in school, and we've been out of school for a few years. It's hard to get back into the studying groove. It's hard to kind of relearn what it's like to study and to sit down and absorb all of that information. So I sent that over to him and he has been absolutely loving it. So listening.com can read math equations. It can read technical words. It can read 
complicated documents. So whether you are studying math, whether you're in law school, whether you're you're studying biology at LSU and you have hopes to get to LSU Medical School, it knows the skip all citations, the footnotes and references, and lets you jump straight to the chapter or section that you want to listen to. This is the perfect time saver for all of you busy students out there. And it even has a one-click note-taking button where it automatically puts the last 10 seconds into a notepad so you don't have to type notes while you listen. It is such a wonderful tool. And best of all, if you use the link listening.com slash locked on, you'll be able to get your first three weeks for free. So go ahead and give it a try. Usually it's only two weeks free, but you get an extra free week when you go to listening.com slash locked on. Again, listening.com slash locked on for three weeks for free. All right. Thanks again for making Locked on LSU your first listen every single day. Also, some very exciting things going on at the Locked on Network. Locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. That's right. Locked on Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked on, plus our national shows covering every single league. So go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. All right, let's get back into it. What a fun, 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 fun night of LSU football last night after Georgia State uh, scored the first two touchdowns and that was all she wrote. It was just an absolute blast watching this LSU offense. I have vowed to myself early on this season, whenever we realized, hey, that this LSU offense actually is legit. Like, hey, Jaden Daniels is pretty freaking good. I vowed to myself that I would not take for granted watching this team, that I would not take this offense. I would not take Jaden Daniels and Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas and Kyron Lacey. I would not take this for granted. Those players, that quarterback playing for and quarterbacking my team. That's really what I tried to watch last night's games through the lens of, and it made it honestly even more fun. So a couple of things. I think we had some some varying opinions and some varying perspectives on Jaden Daniels' usage last night against George State. First and foremost, there might be a group, a smaller group probably of the fan base, but of, of an, a fraction of the fan base that exists that was wondering why Jaden Daniels was still in the game. Like why you're why you are up 49 to nothing and your starting quarterback is still in the game, where a lot of people may be thinking, why in the world are you risking an injury to your starting quarterback and potentially hurting this draft stock, potentially putting yourself in a vulnerable position against Texas A&M next week for a game that you've already won, like for a game that has that was put away and had been put away for a while. I'll say that. Look, Saturday was all about Jaden Daniels, and I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. Saturday was all about stat padding. That game against Georgia State was all about the uh, the idea of you're not paying attention. Well, I'm going to make you pay attention now. I said yesterday on the podcast, it's not what you do against Georgia State that wins you the Heisman. It's not like you're going to come out of nowhere and then all of a sudden an eight touchdown night against a non-power five program is all of a sudden going to put you on, you know, on notice. But it was one of those games of, oh, you're in the camp for J.J. McCarthy, who frankly didn't have that great of a day against Maryland yesterday. Yo, know, you're uh, you're leaning toward Bo Nix. Well, none of those players are doing what Jaden Daniels is doing. None of those players have had a night like Jaden Daniels did against Georgia State. And look, I understand it's Georgia State. It's not Alabama. It's not uh, it's not Texas A&M. It's not one of the big brands in college football. But Oregon and Michigan and Washington, I'll even add, have had their fair share of cupcake games, have had their fair share of games where you can stat pad but none of them had a night like that. It was a prove it game. It was a let's run up the score and let's run up the amount of highlight reels that that Jaden Daniels has. Because like I mentioned on the podcast yesterday when I was talking about what's a fair amount that you can play Jaden Daniels or you should play Jaden Daniels, Jaden Daniels is at an inherent disadvantage in the Heisman race because this team has three losses. 
Bo Nix at Oregon, that team only has one loss against a top five Washington team. J.J. McCarthy at Michigan, well, that's an undefeated team. Who am I missing here? Michael Penix at Washington, undefeated team. That there, for some reason, is a group of Heisman Trophy voters out there that somehow think that you know wins and losses should be a, a deterrent for the Heisman Trophy, when I think that's absolutely ridiculous and asinine. And I understand the idea that the best player in college football should probably be on one of the best teams in college football. But like I've said, Jaden Daniels can't play defense. And that's really the only difference that I see in my eyes between LSU being an undefeated or 11 and one team versus being where they are now with the ceiling at nine and three. It's the defense. Jaden Daniels did everything that he could against Ole Miss. Jaden Daniels did every single possible thing that he could have done against Alabama. And the defense just couldn't pick up their end of the slack. So I think it's stupid, frankly, stupid that people look at wins and losses as an individual award statistic, but that's just simply the reality. So you're looking at Jaden Daniels inherently having a disadvantage compared to the other Heisman frontrunners, which really right now feels more like a, like a Jaden Daniels bone Nix race. And we're going to get into more of the specifics of the Heisman race. I'll continue to make my case, which feel for Jaden Daniels, which feels a lot more solidified now than it was maybe the last time I made a case for Jaden Daniels just last week. We'll get into the competition comparisons to Heisman Trophy winners of the past. That will be on tomorrow's edition of Locked in LSU. So make sure you, you tune into that. You can find that on your preferred podcast platform and on YouTube. But that's all what yesterday was about, was running up the stat sheet for Jaden Daniels. And I have absolutely, positively zero problem with that. And I understand the idea of why are you risking an injury to your starting quarterback? But I can respond to that by saying your starting quarterback can get injured at any time, anywhere, against anyone. I would say to that, you can't play football scared. But you could also respond to that, well, you can't play football stupid either. I get it. I totally understand the idea of not putting your quarterback in harm's way, not risking an injury in a game that I don't want to say is useless because you have a 12-game schedule. None of those games are useless. You only get 12 opportunities at these. But in a game that you had put away, you had won that game, that victory was airtight. Why continue to put your quarterback at risk? To that, I say, the Heisman Trophy is really the biggest thing that this team has going for it. It is. Because I understand that I, I just say that the Heisman Trophy is an individual award, which it is. But it truly is a reflection of the entire team, I believe. That it's a reflection on this entire team. That it is a, uh, it's an accolade for Brian Kelly. And it's an accolade for this football program. If you have two Heisman Trophy winners in a matter of five seasons. Two out of the last five seasons. I saw this tweet last night and I, it's, it's escaping me who tweeted it. And I feel so bad about that. I feel so bad about that, that I can't give the right person credit. But this person wrote, you know, John Bell Edwards is going for two Heismans in, in one, uh, in, in one term. I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, that is absolutely crazy. Like, has that happened to any other governor in the history of the U S probably not. Um, so it's a, it's a reflection of this entire football program as a whole. And if you would ask Jaden Daniels, are you willing to risk injury in order to strengthen your Heisman resume? I'm sure he would have said yes. Which brings me to the other side of the equation. The other side of the LSU fan base that might be a little bit bigger. It might be a, big, a little bit louder. Begging the question, why did you take him out? Why didn't you let him break the record? We'll discuss that coming up next. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 Moneyline bet. That's right, $150 if your team wins. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. You got spreads, you got player props, you got over-unders, and so much more. If you're listening to this on Monday morning, look, it's not too late to get in on the NFL action. We still have got a juicy Monday night football game 
Eagles at the Chiefs. Not sure how many Taylor Swift prop bets there are on the FanDuel Sportsbook app, but check those out because I'm sure those are going to be a doozy. But visit the FanDuel.com. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. Again, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet on FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, thanks again for making Locked On LSU your first listen every single day. Like I mentioned earlier, I felt like there were two fractions of the fan base, one larger than the other. The smarter fraction, smaller fraction was probably thinking, why did you leave Jaden Daniels in as long as you did? Why are you risking injury? Why are you potentially hurting his draft stock if he does get injured? Why are you leaving things up to chance? Take him out. You've already won the football game. And to that, I say he is writing himself a Heisman resume. Now, the other side of the fan base is also asking, and that's a fair question to ask, was asking another very fair question. And that is, why'd you take him out? Why did you just leave him in there? Why didn't you let him break the record? And I was asking myself that same question. My mom was actually texting me. My mom was texting me and said, why didn't they let him break the record? And I'm thinking to myself, they probably would have let Jaden Daniel stay in the game if he wanted to stay in the game. That's what I'm thinking. I'm giving the coaching staff the benefit of the doubt. And I'm saying, well, they probably left it up to him. Hey, Jaden, we're in a good position. They probably asked them a few times. I'm thinking in my head, and this is my opinion, was, okay, after, you, after you're after you up, you know, by 40-something, 30-something points. Hey, Jaden, you want to stay in? Yeah, I want to stay in. All right, go ahead. You, know, you go ahead and do what you need to do. You go ahead and do what you need to do to feel like you are in a comfortable position for the Heisman Trophy, for whatever individual accolades that you have, individual goals you would like to achieve. We feel like we, that you have afforded yourself that right and that opportunity for you to be able to dictate when you stay and when you go, when you want to keep going out there and when you're ready to call it. That's on you, brother. You know, that's that's your decision to make. That's what I'm thinking in my head. And then I hear Jaden Daniels post-game interview and asking about the record. Again, the record being the single game touchdown record that Joe Burrow set, program record that Joe Burrow set against Oklahoma in the college football playoff. Jaden Daniels tied that record with eight. He could have gone for another one. Heck, he could have gone for four more at, at the rate that that team was going last night. And Jaden was saying, man, you know, I wanted to break it. I wanted to go back out there. I wanted to just score one more and get the record. But so then I'm thinking, well, why didn't that coaching staff let him do that? Why didn't they let him go out and just score one more touchdown? Heck, I mean, he's playing for three and a half quarters. You let, you let him stay out there long enough to tie the record. Let him stay out there just a little bit longer. Now, I know if they would have let them go out there and knock on all the wood, if Jaden Daniels would have sprained an ankle or done something, I don't even want to speak it into existence, then I would probably be yelling, why would you put him back out there? Why would you Why would you risk injury? So I get it. There's there's no correct decision. And hindsight is twenty twenty. That we can be nitpicking the decision all that we want. We can be nitpicking the risk that this coaching staff inherently took in leaving Jaden Daniels out there as long as they did. But I'm thinking, man, this guy's given you everything. He's put his body on the line week after week after week. He has won you games. Single-handedly has won you games. He personifies Everything that an LSU football player is tough, determined, team first, hungry, talented, just everything, every attribute that you could possibly think of that makes a great LSU player. Jaden Daniels personifies that times 10. I mean, this has been the most exciting offense to watch since the most exciting offense to watch in the history of college football. And you're not even going to give him the opportunity to break the record and be able to have that in his back pocket to say, man, Joe Burrow, who is regarded as the best quarterback in the history of this program, Joe Burrow, whose name will be forever enshrined in the history of LSU football and the history of college football as a whole. I have the opportunity to break that guy's record. 
and you're not going to let me? I didn't agree with that. Now, again, I don't know what the conversations were behind closed doors. I don't know if that was, you know, they were willing to take risks up to a certain point and that just would have kind of pushed it over the edge. You know, I don't I don't know the conversations that that coaching staff was having. I don't know the conversations that Jaden Daniels was having with Brian Kelly himself. But just from the information that I have and Jaden Daniels saying, yeah, no, I, I wanted to break it. I'm saying that on national television. It makes me a little bummed that this coaching staff didn't give him the opportunity because whatever you can give Jaden Daniels, it doesn't even scratch what Jaden Daniels has given you. Now, to give this program total credit, I mean, Brian Kelly, his entire team, his entire coaching staff, the social media staff, the video staff, the rather sick graphics that they've been putting out over the past couple of weeks, like they're doing everything that they can to campaign for Jaden Daniels. There are billboards up around Baton Rouge. They're doing everything they can to give Jaden Daniels his due. So that's not, I'm not saying that, that they're they're not doing enough for Jaden Daniels. I just would have liked to have seen them give him, give him the opportunity to, uh, to break that record. Tying the record is cool enough. Only thing cooler than tying a record is breaking a record. But coming up in tomorrow's edition of Lockdown LSU, I want to take a deep dive into Heisman conversation. Jaden Daniels versus the field. Jaden Daniels versus Heisman Trophy winners in history. And why? Uh, if you're not, if you not already are banging on the table for Jaden Daniels to be the winner of the Heisman Trophy, why those things might change your mind. We'll get into that on tomorrow's edition of, L- of Locked on LSU. But stick around because coming up next is Locked On's brand new first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with locked with lo- local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. So go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Again, that's coming up next. Heisman Talk coming up in tomorrow's edition of Locked On LSU.